And uh, you might say that uh, human life is based on two types of interaction. Either the interaction of self, one of the selves with one of the others, or the observation of the interaction of the others with each other. One does not always participate. Let's say the Europeans are fighting uh, among themselves in the 19th century, Germans and the French. Somebody sitting in Egypt is neither this other nor other, but is part of the life of observing what the effect of that those two others are fighting against each other. But by and large, uh, practically all of the political, cultural, religious, moral uh, actions, events that have taken place in human history can be understood to a large extent as an action and reaction, interaction between the self and the other, self-preservation, whatever that self is, overcoming of the other, or in fact making peace with the other, and making the other a part of one's self in a certain sense. And all religions have played a very, very important role in this matter in two ways. Today, I know many people blame religions for all the wars that have gone on or something like that. I always give the uh, example when the Russians, the, the Soviet army and the Chinese Red Army fought at the Misuli River north of China, in which a large number were killed. And there was not one single Confucian or Christian fighting on either side. There were two communist armies. And the 20th century was a very good proof that religion is not the cause of war. It's used. When it's not used, then ideology is used. Stalin and Hitler and all these brutal dictators of the 20th century, they killed tens of millions of people. They, they did not fight in the name of religion. So I do not accept that thesis at all. Anything that is important in society can be used by forcing that society to protect the self or to attack the other. If it, it could be economic, it could be political, it could be pride of language, of tribe, and it could be religion. In a society in which religion is weak, there's no danger of having religious wars. You have economic wars instead, because econ economic considerations are strong. The bombs continue to be dropped in the name of what and whom depends on the condition of the world in which we live, that's the bottom line, unfortunately. So the religion is not to be seen as one of the causes for the, this uh, clash between the self and the other. This is part of the human condition. Religion does two things at the same time, which make it ambivalent from this point of view. One is that it is perhaps, or at least has been during human history, the most important factor of self-identification, that is the, for the self to identify itself as what it is, as it grows up. I said most of human history, it's not necessarily now in a secular society, but in most human history, it grows up to know that its mother tongue is Spanish, that its hair is black, that uh, its mother is this, father is this, the town is Saragossa, this and that, but ultimately it's the religion that molds self-identity, and many sociologists, of course, have seen this, have accepted this, have written about this. So this is one aspect, and it's in the strength of the self. At the same time, it teaches more than any other, more than any other force in human life, selflessness, the transcending of the self. There's no religion which does not teach unselfishness. Whether it's the language of Buddhism, which does not even believe in the self, is a religion based, uh, metaphysical on the anatta, doctrine of anatta, no self. But nevertheless, the net result morally, which, which concerns me here, is the same. Uh, the Buddhist compassion is based on transcending the self. Jewish, Christian, Islamic teachings, the same. Every religion at once fortifies our identity of the self and teaches us how to transcend the self.